All right, I think we're live, folks. Uh, it made me hit a button. I thought it was going to go live for us. So here we are, we're running a little bit behind. Uh, let me pick us a little tune, I guess. Make sure that we're out here. Uh, let's see <laughs> if you can see us. If y'all can see us, wave at us. YouTube is up. YouTube is up. Good. Welcome, Jim Panky here. And uh, if you see me looking over here at Lisa and pointing at her, I'm not. I, I'm probably working with a computer, but it looks like I'm looking at Lisa. And I've put my hands over into her room. Now, right, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to do before we get we jump in here. So let, let's find out what's going on, folks uh if you can see us all right we got some folks we got jody and flint and jw and philip all right and y'all are all youtube folks and should have some facebook folks joining us here soon i hope uh and we're gonna we're gonna talk today we got we got stuff to talk about talking's good <laughs> uh let's see. Hawaii. He said aloha, so aloha. He did say aloha. So, Flint, if you are in Hawaii, that's awesome. Uh, if you're not, still awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, folks. I'm dealing with a, I'm dealing with a uh, Flintstones computer here. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it looks like we're live. We got a few folks here on the Facebook looking at us too. So that's great. So I'm gonna make that one to go away and let's see if y'all are good all righty hey duck first time here from wisconsin well welcome from wisconsin hey dario uh waiting on a first banjo to be delivered can't wait me either you're gonna have to post some pictures and videos as you're learning that's exciting i tell you i get folks all the time that send me messages saying hey i'm using your videos and i'm learning how to play and it's like y'all just don't know how much that's how exciting that is to know that i've helped y'all learn how to play so that's uh that's pretty pretty amazing to me that that, that something like that exists in the world today i mean who knew who knew so uh let's see here uh yeah, see, we kind of went live here. We, we had this big fancy screen and everything. See, we, we were going to have this, but seeing that I didn't know what I was doing, there it is. So here we are. We're going to get moving today. Uh, and Lisa, is she can tell you more about herself, but she is a restorative exercise specialist. Is that correct? All right. So, so there's that. So here, we'll make that go. There's and uh, let's see. Out there in the world, Lisa. Oh yeah. Lisa, tell us a little about you and. Uh... Yeah. So um, I'm a massage therapist for 18 years now, and uh, although on a bit of a break <laughs> while we wait for this. <laughs> um, but also in the last five years, um, specifically, I've been training with Katie Bowman and Nutritious Movement to become a restorative exercise specialist. And um, what we do is we look at how shapes of the body relative to gravity load the tissues. And when you can become really aware of how things are loaded, you kind of find your sticky spots. And when you find your sticky spots, you can change them. <laughs> And when you change them, um, you can improve uh, really circulation. 
um, circulation of the blood, but also um, and mostly what I find in myself and with the people I work with is that they just start to feel comfortable in their own bodies again, um, whether it's because of work related or recovering or maybe it's performance related. Um, and so it's been real fun, like since last week to bring this to the musician world, specifically banjo players, um, because maybe you didn't know you could feel better. And when you feel better, maybe it's more fun to play. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Jody is saying it's hard to hear you, Lisa. I'm hearing you okay, but maybe scooch up a little closer. Well, let me, let's see. Thanks for the feedback, Jody. What if I take these out? Is that any better? Testing one, two, three, Jody. <laughs> Sound, sounds pretty good. Uh, really let's close. see. Uh, Rod Shop wants to know where my bibs are. Rod, I've lost over 50 pounds and uh, bibs are expensive. And uh, so I, I had I had to resort to buying uh, smaller clothes and it's, I, I'm saving up for some bibs. Uh, I, all of them I have, they look like clown bibs now. They're just really huge. And so the, the, they'll be back for sure. Uh, I, I miss them. Uh, now you were talking about a banjo strap that had one on each side. That could look like bibs. <laughs> it could, couldn't it? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, so, hey, country boy, glad you're back. Uh, all right, so... So here we are. We've got some folks here. I think I think we're good. Uh, all right, Lasha Lish, Ackerman says you sound okay. So, uh, I, I when I do these, I put on my school teacher voice. So I've I've learned I learned to project. So, uh, how many banjos do I have? Boy, that's. It, all right, so th th there's two answers to that. One of these, one of these answers is uh, depends on if my wife is watching this stream or not. <laughs> but no, they're, they're funny story. So years ago, when we bought this house, you know, I had to get insurance, and I wanted to get a writer for musical instruments. So we got out banjo. Well, we got out all the instruments one day and was taking pictures just for insurance purposes. And we had the banjos out and I'm taking pictures and my wife says, nine banjos? And I, th and I thought, yeah, nine's a good answer. I had two loaned out. So, <laughs> so I, I don't know. At this point, I've quit counting banjos. I don't know, I've got, I've got nine or 10, I guess, maybe. Uh, and I've, I've got, I've got another banjo on the way, so it's, I'm expecting. Uh, so, do you also have a ukulele banjo? Or a I do. I ha I have a banjo, you, and I have a little tiny ukulele sized banjo, but it's a five string. So it's it's five strings, but it's a little uke uke size banjo. You can kind of. Like right above my finger, you can see it on the wall way back there. So yeah, that that's a banjo. It's a piccolo sized banjo. Uh, all right. So oh well. All right. Hey Josiah Dalton. Hey. <laughs> all right. And let's see. Are we going to learn how to play the banjo while bouncing on a Pilates ball? Well, yeah, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> We might have to work on a choreography for that. Yeah. <laughs> and Rod is saying that he taught his wife some of the stretches from the last video. She sits at the computer all day and it really helps her. So thanks a lot for that. Yeah. You know, I've been doing some of those. I haven't been doing them all, but I have been doing them. And uh, a lot so, so before we kind of dive into today, uh, so I was thinking about like, okay. So I'm going to go play a show in the future, obviously, you know, not, not anytime soon. But if I'm going to go play or if I'm going to do a YouTube performance and, and this, this is just something quick. Uh, what are based on those last 
15 exercises that we did. Uh, what, what's a handful of those that I could do like right before a show just to kind of relax and warm up? Oh, okay. I'm so glad you're asking this question because I think one thing we discovered is after doing all those stretches, like your hands were so loose. Yeah. The, the memory you had on reaching the chord shapes, you were going past them. Yeah. So yeah, after, after our last live stream, you know, Lisa had me doing all of these exercises and then I thought, well, I'll close out, I'll play a song. And so I'm reaching for things and I'm actually reaching further than I was planning on doing because my hands were really loose. And so after warming up, it would have done, warming up with my hand exercises, it would have been nice to have another 10 or 15 minutes to warm up with the banjo to make sure that everything was, was great. So a lot of times, like, you know, if the band goes and we play a festival somewhere, uh, you know, usually we'll warm, we'll pick a little bit before we go play, but before we pick, you know, we usually have time to ourselves and warm up a little bit before we warm up with a band. And usually part of that process is like today it's cool outside and I was outside for a little while and my hands are still a little cold. And so I remember this warming up thing and that's, uh, that's pretty darn helpful. Uh, And not just your hands, but Lisa's showing you your forearms too, because that's, she told me, and she told you last week, these fingers, the muscles that move them are down here. Not, I mean, you really don't have muscles in your hand, do you? Yes, you do. But. But. (laughs) Yeah. um, He's um, closer up to the elbow. Right. Grip on it and you make a fist, you'll feel what those muscle bellies are. Right. So maybe um a best way to answer the question of warm-up would be first to say that if you intend on all the exercises that we did, and there's a video recapping those 15 on my YouTube channel. Um those if you're planning on doing all of them, that's gonna be better when you're not playing, (laughs) you know, find 15 minutes in your day, uh, unrelated to your, your banjo time. Um, but then for banjo time, it would be like identifying what needs help. Like we had talked about fingers feeling, um, stuffy. So if it's that, you know, I would do the finger ringing one that we did. Okay. Fingers. Yeah. So yes, yesterday, yesterday, this finger right here, this index finger, it was, it was problematic. It hurt all day. I mean, from this, this knuckle all the way down into my hand, it just hurt all day. And I, I'm assuming it's probably arthritis related. It could be weather related. I don't know, but it hurt today. It's much better, but it's a little, you talked about sticky. It's a little sticky today. And, uh, Social fingers not to social finger works pretty good, but the but the index finger is is a little sticky, and uh, and where am I feeling that the sticky the sticky I'm feeling well in this joint, but I'm also feeling it like back here near my wrist. Hey, and so one I would do the one where you made fist facing to the front, and your elbow is going to be under your shoulder, so you're not going to want to tear out. Five. Right on. <laughs> and then, yeah, right on. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna flex, keeping your fingers flexed. You're gonna flex your wrist, and then open the elbow. It's, I'm on the floor, so it looks like it went out to the side. And that did help get um, a load on the back of the wrist there. Right. Further yeah. On. See, we should have talked about that yesterday while I was in dire straits of pain. So, <laughs> if I didn't think to ask. So, what often happens is, you know, start out with that fist, but as your wrist bends, a lot of times those fingers will start to unfurl. Right. The more you hold on to that, not that you're forcing anything, but the amount of wrist flexion you have will depend on how much finger flexion you have 
<laughs> Rod is giving me a hard time. He's saying that maybe it would help my back if I sat in a straight back chair. It probably would. That's one of the things that I push on all my students. I said, you know, get off the couch and <laughs> get in a straight back chair. And, and really, yeah, he's right. Uh, I'm sitting on the edge of the couch. So <laughs> thanks for busting my chops, right? I appreciate it. <laughs> he's listening. I, I love I love you guys. I do. Uh, all right. Um, but then, like, another generic one that I just really like for almost anything is when you've got um i've got here the one where you take flat hand and then you get over top right that's kind of a nice general warm-up right would be one there's a very popular one where people fold their hands and do like i was the Bugs Bunny at the piano or something and then you Yeah, I do that. Yeah. So um that is a good one. But what you want to look for, um, you can also do it this direction. So I'll talk about it in this direction. And um you're looking for like a rainbow, like a really steep tall rainbow. So um your elbows are out to the side, Jim. So right. Bring them down. Okay. And if your hands look like they could serve something, you want to press your knuckles up towards the ceiling. Right. Okay. Flex your wrists. Which might be I've got a banjo on the way. <laughs> so sometimes the... Yeah. It's this wrist part that also needs to extend, and then the knuckles go up. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of a nice one. Now, the other thing is you can see a lot of my fingers, right? Yeah. So dipping your thumbs away from you. Right. Is kind of nice. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. You can do that up overhead as well. You can't see Okay. But again, you're so there's a the wrists are bent, but the knuckles also need to press away. Go this way. Yeah. Yeah. Gallery move. Um, but yeah, I think before performance, the trick would be not to do too many stretches. Uh, Carol is saying that she always uses warms up with warm water and rubs. Uh, and rubbing my palms on the inside. Yeah, but there's That's Lisa recommended. I mean, warming up that really helped for me. That that part was huge. Yeah, so keep in mind, um, the warm water is a really good one. I like that one too, if you have access to it. Um, that is an external way of warming up. Um, the goal with the friction, which I know you as a Boy Scout know that friction is a component of fire and that's heat too. Yeah. But not to create a fire here with friction. <laughs> the goal is just to stimulate the nervous system. And as you stimulate the nervous system, then you're heating yourself up from the inside and you're not relying on that external heat. So of external and internal is really nice. Awesome. All right. So let's see, make sure. Let's see, do these exercises work even if you have cold fingers because of nervousness? That's from Severin. Oh man, that's a great question. Uh, so like stage fright, that kind of nervousness? Yeah, probably so. Uh, I'm just gonna guess because it, what, what he's experiencing there, I've experienced, you know, we're going to do this big show you know it's going to be something pretty pretty important and, and your hands will get cold you get a little clammy you know it's the whole nervousness thing uh yeah that that uh so that's i don't know i don't know i don't know if that's good then i'm just going to have warmed up sweaty hands <laughs> yeah because that clammy is a part of um like a sympathetic nervous response um, it's a nervous system thing 
uh, that supersedes what's going on, <laughs> you know, temperature wise. So um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good question. You're better. Uh, uh, Dr. Dalton is asking about left arm aches. Uh, Dr. Can you be more specific about your left arm and where it aches, and you know what you're doing when it aches? That I mean. Yeah, there's lots of aches. Oh, and Country Boy is asking: Is it usual to get cramps with a stretch where you close your fist and stretch out your arm? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um so there's like range of motion and there's strength and a range of motion. Um, and so you're asking these flexor muscles to work um, so that you can load and stretch the backside of the wrist and forearm. And so it would, it would not be uncommon for them to cramp. So if it cramps, just take a break, stretch it the other direction and try it again. Over time, those cramps should go away. Uh, Dovehead offer said, drink a beer to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's several ways around this. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that could work. Uh, let's see. Let's see. That, let's see. Oh, because, yeah. All right. So, left arm aches. And so, he explains. So, while you're playing, yeah. You know, I'm just going to tell you, this is just an issue of stamina where you, you your arm is up here. But let me tell you something. So when you are playing, whether you're standing or sitting, and the, I, I don't know much about movement, but I know a little about banjo. And I do know a little about the way that you need to be sitting or standing. And this is part of the reason I bug you all about, you know, straight back chairs and that sort of thing. So when you are sitting... Or when you're standing playing, this elbow right here, get that elbow down. Let that let gravity do its thing with that elbow. Don't don't hold your elbow up. That's gonna get that's gonna make your shoulder and your arm, everything's gonna get tired holding that out. Let that elbow just drop. Let gravity do its thing. The only thing that's holding my arm up at this point is my thumb, and it's just resting right there at the top of the neck. It's just sitting on there, just barely. If we flip that thumb off, my arm's going to fall. It's that relaxed. So it's just, my arm is just hanging by my side. I was working on pedal steel guitar, and this was 25 years ago. And I have a friend here local who's a good pedal steel player. And I had, I had got me a pedal steel guitar, and I'm working, and I'm sitting there, and I've got my elbows up. I mean, they are up. And, and Dick would walk behind me and take my elbows and push them down to my side. He says, put your elbows down. You're not flying this thing, you're playing. And, and so remember that when you're playing to, to relax that shoulder, relax that elbow and let it dangle. So yeah, there's a little bit where you're holding up and yeah, your bicep is invoked here, but really and truly not that much because I'm letting my thumb do its thing and hold itself there. And so, but, if, if you watch any of my videos and watch me play and find some of the ones where I'm playing with different bands like Hamilton County Ramblers or, you know, Lou Wong, and you, you'll find and watch me play. You will see my and I'm not saying I've got the best posture, but watch and you will see my elbows down at my side. Now, if you were to find pictures of me when I was 18, 19, 20 years old playing okay so i'm sitting here playing and if i stand up it's not going to be much different so here i'm going to stand up and i'm standing and you see my arms are relaxed my right arm too when i was a kid this arm would be out here like this and this shoulder would just absolutely ache part of the reason was you know i was trying to be earl and that shoulder and arm would be out also, you would see it with my left arm, too. So I look like this guy instead of this guy. So, you know, this is bad because there's a lot of tension to do this. This is good. So you're, you're shooting for the least amount of tension as possible. So it's, hang on. It's possible, too, that if that left wrist 
and some mobility is restricted, that it would require, let me get in the right direction here, that if you don't have, where am I in the camera? If you don't have this motion to get around, um, what is that part called? The neck? <laughs> <laughs> Lisa. Um, I know, right? Um, I'm in anatomy brain right now, not instrument anatomy, that it might require internal rotation of the shoulder to get your hand around. So right. Be a habit. It could be uh, restrictions. So even wrist mobility might help you get that elbow down. But actually, today I do have a specific exercise on keeping your elbows by your side. Funny enough. So Je Jeff makes a comment, uh, and uh, th it's got a big word in it. But I, so you can you can fix it. Jeff says, and because otherwise you might start to shrug or your supraspinatus will be overworked with the arm up. Yes. Okay. So I don't, I only have my hand model. I don't have my shoulder model, but um, the shoulder joint is your arm bone, the humerus, and your blade. And so there's a group of muscles called the rotator cuff. Um, and several of them have spinatus. In so there's infraspinatus, supraspinatus, um, uh, teres minor. What am I missing? Sub subscapularis. So the spinatus part is just that this flat bone of the shoulder blade has a bony prominent edge and that's the spine. So if it's above the spine, it's supra or above the spine. If it's below it, it's infra. So <laughs> it's yeah. arm up. I'm sorry. The, 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 they're still surprised that you've got a skeleton hand. <laughs> and it's not even Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I, I I have I have interesting friends, y'all. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he's right that if you're up here, um, part of holding that up there could be that part of the rotator cuff. All right. So there's another question here. Rod Shop has uh, asking if you have any ideas for scapula winging. Yes. Um, so many. Let me see where I want to start with that one. I wish I had another person. So scapular winging. Well, actually, okay, last week we put our arm behind our back, right? So go ahead and put right. your arm. And um, I don't know if it'll show up. Uh, can you see that? Yes. So that's the lower corner of my scapula or shoulder blade. Winging is that when you're at rest, those blades come up off the rib cage. Okay. Um, there, there's the observance of what the bones are doing relative to each other. And then there's the why they're doing that. And there could be several whys of why that is happening. Um, that would be a long answer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dennis is asking, maybe I can help Dennis. Dennis, is, how do I stop my right hand from cramping up when I play slowly? Well, you should play slowly more. I mean, and take your time. And a lot of it is just just relaxing. A lot of times we avoid playing slowly because, well, it shows off all of our flaws and, and we can blast through them quickly and we can hide a lot of uh, problems when we go quick as well as we cheat when we go quick. I even heard John Hartford one time talked about the way he cheated to go faster and you use left and right hand techniques. And it's really not a cheat, but I mean, it but there are things that we do when we speed up that we don't do when we go slow, but yeah, cramping and eat a banana. Uh, just, and just, just take your time. 
I mean, I'm gonna, Dennis, I'm going to guess that you may not have been playing for a long time, but I will tell you, there are times, uh, and it's usually not my right hand that I'll have a problem with, but usually if I, if I have a hand cramp, it's always my left hand. And, and, and they happen to, they happen to the best of us and, and, and me included, uh, not that I'm one of the best at, by any stretch, but every band I've ever played with, you know, you'll look over at somebody and they're going, you know, they're holding their hand, they're showing it to you, and it's all been all crazy crooked. And they go, look at my hand. And it's it's just, you know, and you can see the cramp working. And it's like, it's just, it just happens. And uh, I, it, maybe it's uh, lack of practice, you know, lack of use. Could be diet related. I know I stopped having you could cramps. Yeah, there's there's our sock. Now, when I was reviewing the video when I redid it, um, how can you see it? This I can do all these where I'm pincing together, but when I add the sock, maybe it'll be better if I just have a littler one. When I add the sock this fourth finger wants to smear out to the side um it ends up doing this motion rather than being able to pinch straight on so even just practicing uh it's called opposition um with something smushy might help that too uh let's see mark asks when picking fast does my hand stay still or move up and down oh uh, for me the goal is for my hand to be still So yeah, my right hand, uh, so the picking motion, let's see if we can, yeah, there. the picking motion, it's a come here motion. It's that motion, but it's this direction. So the motion isn't here, the motion is here. And, and so really trying to stabilize, trying to stabilize my hand as much as possible. So that's the reason I'm adding, well, I only add a pinky these days, but. So I'm trying to keep my hands still. So yeah, not, not a lot of this motion. So you're not going to build any speed by moving your hand. It's all going to have to be with your fingers and try to try to ponder on that as much as you can. And when you're doing it, uh, let's see. Uh, Parker has finger cramps. When I play with picks, just play with, you know, what I tell my students is put the picks on, leave them on. Go about your day with the picks on for a good portion of your day. Just get used to having them on your fingers. Uh, picks change. So if you're coming from picking without picks to adding picks, they do change the, the way that your fingers strike the strings. I mean, so you're moving up away from the string. And if I put the picks away, and I, I really never play without picks. So I'm picking in a, I have to change my hand posture to play without the picks. So my recommendation, my recommendation is, is put your picks on, leave your picks on, practice with your picks as much as you can. Uh, that, that'll help. Uh, it, it's just a matter, it, it's a matter of posture. All right, let's see. That, but make your screen bigger so that it's closer up for them to see. Yeah, hang on. So da, da, da. I wonder if I can do that. If I do that. <laughs> I can't show them how to pick, though. <laughs> no, nope, that's you. And, uh, oh, hang on. Show them how to pick, Lisa. Hang on. <laughs> well, what uh, I'm all right. There we go. So, uh,
So the so the idea here. So with picks, with picks, you know. So I've got my picks on. Uh, there you can see how they look, and uh, you, you want. <laughs> And your picking motion is, it, it's this come here motion. It's not, you're not wagging your finger. It's, it's come here. And uh, so I'm, I'm putting my pinky down just to add some stability. I got my arm on the armrest. I've got my shoulder relaxed. My elbow is being affected by gravity. And hopefully everything stays pretty, pretty still. that that helps a little bit uh let's see when i practice uh says when i practice sometimes i get this tiny cramp in the back of my right shoulder oh. hey we were going to talk about shoulders today that's a good sec thanks for that segue uh, uh so let me bring you back up here into uh a little bit of equality. Uh, <laughs> all right. So this is the part of the show where if you brought your. If, if you have an instrument, you may have a strap. If you, if you're like me, you've probably got an extra strap. And if you don't have an extra strap, you might have a belt. Yes. So, so. I, I brought everything. Yeah. Um, and a shout out to you for public for this really cool strap. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Mike. All right. So your strap. I'm going to have to project here. Um, you're go um, let me actually get taller for this one because I'm going to need space. You know, Lisa, you might could even go, uh, if you need to, you may be able to go into portrait mode. I think this will work. Okay. Right. So you're just going to hold your strap about shoulder width apart. And you can do this seated or on kneeling as I'm doing standing. And then you'll bring it up overhead, over to the side behind you around to the other side and in front and actually if you have a jacket it's for a towel it's kind of like that cape motion uh. yeah, cape. now if anybody's watching i want to see if they can see the difference between the way jim's doing it and the way <laughs> jim's doing it wrong again <laughs> <laughs> there are Dang it. Problems, jim it's just, story of my life. <laughs> it just means something different is moving. Ah, uh, you've already changed it, haven't you? No, I have not. <laughs> so I'm just loosened. I'm, I'm a little more loosened up. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so when the shoulders aren't very loose, the elbows will start to bend. So as you, if you keep your elbows a little straighter, it will move more of your shoulder. Ah, uh, okay. That um, is a good one. Now, something to watch out for, I'll do it from the side, is that um, in order to get more of your shoulders moving and less of your spine, you're going to want to watch that your back isn't tipping back and forth. So there's this, which doesn't yeah. shoulders very much versus this. It's 
kind of a nice, uh, that might be a quick, easy one you can do before a show. The key okay. one, a show would be I, not do I, it. I've done this with a broom before. You can do this with a broom. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did this. I did this with a broom. And, and some of y'all, if you've been on my channel, you've seen videos of me and Shelby. She she's a singer, and so I was warming up at a. I was playing with a broom. We were at a band rehearsal, and she said, "Hand me that broom." I said, "Okay." And so she takes the broom and puts it behind her back with her hands, yes. and then she just pulls it around to the front. And I'm going, I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> That's a pretty limber. Because here's the next one. So we held the strap in front of us. Now you're going to hold the strap behind you. But you're going to hold it with palms facing forward. Okay. And you're going to lift. So from the side, it's this motion. Right. But what you want to watch for is what the elbows are doing. So this goes back to that question about arm aches. Is that as you lift, you want to make sure that your elbows don't <laughs> the sides. So the elbows go straight back versus outside. All right. So so straight back. Yeah, I come a little closer. Yeah. Yep. And now put a bend in your elbows. Okay. Side for me. I'm like, just turn to the camera sideways. There we go. And then everybody's going to see my fat belly. <laughs> Good. Now, if you want to do it with straight arms, you can always bring it up overhead. Oh, oh no. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> or just this far. Oh, wow. No, I'm, I don't even think that's going to happen. All right. Hey, y'all get 911 on the speed <laughs> dial here. <laughs> there you go. That's as far as you need to go. Okay. Good. Yeah, I feel that. Okay. So I feel that in my triceps. Um, to the back of your arm? Yes. Uh, it could be, yeah, if you're really working it. Yeah, I was I was pulling it pretty good there. Hang on, let me go back to boom. There we go. All right. But the other version, so there was the straight arm. Right. Um, often with the straight arm, what happens is that the elbow will hyperextend to make it possible. So um, move the shoulders more. You're going to bend your elbow on purpose, and you'll keep it bent. So if your arms are straight, and then you bend your elbow then lift the strap off. Okay. Did anyone try that at home? Yeah. Hang on here. I'm gonna I'm gonna swap places with us. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's the same. It is, isn't it? Darn it. All right. <laughs> there you there. go. <laughs> I can see. Um, yeah, there's another. So, that. All right. So, yeah. Let's see. I have, I have a banjo on my strap. My back's killing me. Boy, that's a common thing. You know, banjo, like this one weighs about 12 pounds. Uh, uh, putting the strap on and off, you know, this movement here, I find that movement a lot easier than taking it off. Uh-oh. So put that on, take it off. So that shoulder right there behind you but when you're taking it off it goes in front of you so what if All you right. take it off from behind you do you see what i mean there you go yeah and then i hit myself in the chin <laughs> well 
Well, yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right, guys, I learned something after 40 some years of taking my banjo on and off. It's take not the banjo. better than the other. It's just that you weren't doing the reverse that you thought you could. Obviously, obviously. <laughs> That's why they paid me the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Dovehead says play the mandolin and don't play it. Well, but this, this applies too because like Lisa plays ukulele and uh, – I mean, it, it too, she too uses a strap. And so that movement is the same. It's probably. Okay. What we can do to help with that. If they've still got their strap unattached. So it's your right hand, isn't it? All right. So you're going to hold the strap, the end of the strap with your right hand. And you're going to place it behind you. Right. Um, what you'll notice is that when I put it behind me, my elbow is really kind of pointing out to the side. So I'm going to try to get my elbow to point up towards the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then this left hand is going to hold on and it's going to pull down to help stretch that arm. So from the side, let's see, it's that motion. Awesome. And then I would do it on both sides. But you can use the strap to help stretch. Ooh, but there's another good one that I like. And I'll use this tiny chair. Uh, I think I can see it. So if you're standing at a countertop or, or the back of a couch, that will work as well. <clears throat> but your hands are shoulder width. And um, you back your hips up. To go through. I don't know if that showed up on camera or not, but that one feels really good. Uh, so one of the things that banjo players deal with, and I mean, even guitar players, after, after we've played a while and we've worn this thing on our neck a while, uh, well, your shoulders get really tired and they, and they really hurt. Uh, short of scheduling a appointment with my licensed massage therapist, which I can't even do at the moment. Uh, what, what can I do? Um, let's see if you like this one. Last week we did a shoulder shrug one. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Um, but... This week, I'll show you, so you can probably, okay, if I do that, you can see my collarbones. Yeah. So if you get your, you can do it through a shirt. I like to make sure I have skin on skin contact. Actually, this shows up pretty good on the camera, I think. Can you see how this skin stretches down? Yeah. I'm not pressing into my chest. I'm just letting my skin get sticky. Right. And I'm dragging it down over that collarbone. Right. So I've got on the left one. And so then you can just start to move your neck around like so. Mm hmm. We have, um, there is a post on this one in my Instagram feed from December. And then the other side. Feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the moment to enjoy this. Um, and then, of course, you can go down the middle. And if you're also a singer in the band while you're playing, it, it moves the tissue over the throat and vocal cords. So that can feel good. 
Um, this might also be helpful to understand the trap muscle uh, where the strap is the the spongy meaty muscle part of the top mm -hmm. that people want squeezed or or not squeezed <laughs> because it's too tender. That trap muscle is pretty large. Um, it, it starts at the base of the skull. It comes out to the tips of the shoulders. And then it diamonds down the back. So it's right. A broad muscle, but this particular section curls over and um, attaches on the clavicle. So it has a it has a nonlinear uh, shape to it. Um, so with your arm out to your side, you could use your left hand to uh, hold that muscle. And um, as your elbow spins, so if I get my elbow crease to the ceiling, this muscle flattens. And as my elbow drops behind me, it gets um, firmer. So part of that strap fatigue could just be that this muscle needs to go from here to here. Right. Okay. See that through shoulder rotation. Yeah. And, and, and see, Severin asked the question that I knew was probably going to come. Uh, he says to me, Jim, why do I have such a small strap? <laughs> Tell us about that, Jim. Doesn't it hurt more with a small strap as opposed to a wider strap? Yes, Severin, it hurts more, but it looks so much cooler. <laughs> and it's for me. For me, the decision was made just purely as it's a fashion statement. I don't know. I just like, I like the narrower strap. I like the narrower look. But the other reason that I like the narrower strap is it fits in my case so much better. So when I, uh oh, I took my banjo, put it back, do it right, Jim, from the back. <laughs> so when I, when I wrap the strap around my banjo to go on the case, see, it, it fits. But a wider strap, a wider strap sticks up a little taller and it doesn't fit in the case as well. Uh, so that that's part of the reason for the narrower strap. So yeah, it's it's vanity, nothing more than vanity. And I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, you know, I don't have much in life, so I can be vain about my banjo strap. Uh, <laughs> but like on the uh, on the ukulele, yeah, you, you can have like, let's see, I've got a strap here. Like, well, here. So here, here on, one, on one of my ukuleles where I don't really have strap buttons, I use I use this for my strap. You know, it's just uh, it's just a piece of paracord. But the ukulele weighs, you know, a couple pounds, <laughs> if that. And, and then and then Lisa's got a strap. It's just, you know, it's an inch and a half wide. Well, it's the same width as this one. Is but, it? yeah, it's the same width. Well, don't make me go get a ruler. Uh, <laughs> I bet yours is an inch strap, but mine, no, mine's an inch. I don't know. I don't know. What if? <laughs> Could you take off your... Could you take off your instrument just by lifting your instrument and the strap at the same time? Yeah, but I don't usually pick. I usually the the banjo being as heavy as it is. Okay. I don't. I don't. While I trust the strap to support it when it's around my body, I'm not real comfortable with just supporting it just by the strap. I don't know. It's just a. It's a psychological thing would encourage people, if they're having issues with taking it on and off, I would take it on and off in front of a mirror and start to look at where your joints are and start to notice how you're doing it. Um, and as you do these exercises, it should get easier. Severin wants to hear you play Somewhere Over the Rainbow. <laughs> oh, but 
I'll have to work on that. And <laughs> I can chuck, but <laughs> yeah, and Dub had yeah, yeah, Dub. Some of the uh, some of the uh, old like the Pete Seeger style long neck banjos. You, you you better have a tall ceiling or or a big room. Yeah. Let's see. My right hand index and social finger are sometimes swollen from arthritis. Are there finger exercises to limber them up? Yeah. So if you will find our last live stream or go to Lisa's YouTube channel and there will be I'll put a link below. It's not there right now, but I will add that momentarily and, and you'll be able to find the link in the description to get back to Lisa's YouTube channel. Or if you just go to my channel. Her channel is one of my featured channels. So you can go and, and find her channel there. Uh, and then I'll go, Larry, you ain't right, man. Yeah. Larry, Larry wants to know if the strap would be more comfortable if it was tied around your head. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> Lisa, you met Larry. He, hi, hi, Larry. <laughs> yeah, Larry, Larry ain't right, y'all. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> let's see oh i just i just learned something i think here watch this whoa that's pretty cool did that work yeah yeah it works all right larry huh. there you go larry just for you man <laughs> Well, now, y'all, I've just learned something. I can put your, I can put your questions on the, on the screen. Uh, let's see. Now, there's well, for, hmm? in from yesterday's. Um, oh yeah. I've commercial. Well, there there were two things that I saw come up, and one was um, people who sit all day for work, and then they sit for banjo, and their back gets uncomfortable. So. I wanted to show you some things you can do in your chair. Um, endurance, being able to do something for a long period of time is more successful when you have options to move. Um, so even when you're stuck in one place, you can move differently um, and that helps fight fatigue. As long as you have a problem, because I'm a lazy dog. I only do if something stops working or causes pain. <laughs> There's a club for that. That's everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Where, uh, pain is really a great motivator. <laughs> yes. Well, like I said yesterday, my index finger, y'all, it was it was just really, I mean, I was struggling with it yesterday a good bit. And today, today much better. Uh, but I started out my day doing some stretches, doing some warm-ups, and... Uh, yeah, a lot better. I, I've taken, I took no pain med, you know, I didn't take a leave or anything today. I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. And, and to consider what are they defining or how are they measuring improvement or success or result? So, um, a lot of times, like if we have a pain, we just want it to go away and maybe it goes away. Maybe it doesn't, but they're, you don't have to wait until it disappears to feel better or to function better. Um, things you might start to notice is, oh, well, I'm taking less over-the-counter meds. Right. I don't cramp as long as I used to or as often as I used to. And so you start to notice that there's a transition towards feeling and moving better. Um, and it doesn't have to be overnight. Um, so you kind of have to decide what are you looking at to determine that what you're doing is successful? Because you might be more successful at it than you think. Oh, I, 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 oh Larry, Larry has clarified. He was talking about tying the strap around the head of the banjo. I, I kind of do that. I, I attach. Oh, I attach it. Yeah, it kind of goes around. Uh, it's not, you know, they make a strap. It's called a cradle strap. And this isn't one, but... When I, I bought this strap 50 pounds ago, and so I've had to shorten it up a good bit. And so it's almost a cradle strap now where it attaches all the way around the head. So uh, it, it, it makes it balance out a little, a little better. Uh, for the banjo, 
ukulele though uh it's it's a little different i i use like on the one that i've got i just use like the little classical guitar kind of hook thing and i just hook it on a bracket and that seems to work fine uh, let's see hey y'all got any more questions anything at all ask a question good one uh, yeah we're here for a little bit longer. We've been here. Well, we've been here an hour. We got started three minutes late due to due to Jim not knowing what the heck he's doing with this stream yard. But, uh, did the strap one where you lift your arms away from your hips, but you can also let's see. So you're gonna hold palms facing forward, elbows stay back and you slide up your back. So before we were trying to lift, this time you're keeping the strap on your back, but as you go up, don't let your elbows come out. And that really gets the front of the shoulders. But for sitting, I want to make, I think it was Robert asked about sitting. So, um, <clears throat> Getting your back to move. So it depends on how you're thinking of your back. There's back muscles, there's the spine, and there's the ribs, and there's, um, so there's like the torso that we might be calling the back. Um, right. Keep in mind that your largest shoulder muscle is on the torso, the lat. You know, so if you're doing row at the gym or hanging, you'll feel those lats engaged. So even just doing shoulder mobilizations can help how your back feels. But um, your spine can flex and extend. It can side flex and extend, and it can rotate. So if you're stuck in a chair for most of the day, um, just finding opportunities to change shapes. And if you're really stiff, it might be short holds at the beginning. You know, but there's an active range. Um, you don't have to just like crank it out. Um, if you're holding on to your chair, you can side bend. I'm in, I'm in a really short chair. <laughs> so it just depends on how high your chair is off the ground. But um, there's usually like a bar or the legs you can hold on to and reach down. That one feels pretty good. Let's see from the side. Um, but a real nice one that I like is to give yourself a hug. And you can do this one just on the couch or a straight back chair. So go ahead and give yourself a hug, Jim. Another finger questions are fingers questions. Okay, we'll get back to that, Severin. All right, so give yourself a hug. And if your fingers are on top of your shoulders, bring them down beside your ribs. There you go. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. And now. And then hug a little tighter. It's the first hug I've got today. <laughs> open safe hug. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes when people are in this hug, breathe in, they'll, their elbows will go up. So you'll keep your elbows where they are and you want your rib cage to come out. Now, you probably gave yourself a hug with one arm more comfortable on the other one. So you're going to switch it around. And that'll feel weird. And you'll breathe there. Off uh, the expansion of your rib cage in the front, it really right. a lot of the tissues around your spine and the back to move. So that can help with those shoulder pains in the back. Even um, it's a nice way to just move and get things around. Severin, uh, that's a really good question. I suspect that that is that there might be other reasons other than blood flow and have to like if it's um like a nervous system response 
and not just the amount of actual circulation. Um, but that's a good question. I'm not, I don't know for sure the answer to that one. Any other questions? Let's see. Well, yeah, Robert says. Oh, good question. That's Marcelo. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, Robert. Yeah, Robert was saying that these chair stretchers are great things. So I'll start using them tomorrow at work. Yeah. Let's see. When you sit with your banjo, is the weight on your lap or on your strap? Yes. Uh, so generally, when I. I had. I adjust my strap here. Let's back up a little bit here. When I adjust my strap so that the banjo is touching my legs and while it is supporting some of the weight, it's not supporting all of the weight. The goal for me was, you know, adjust my strap where the weight is on my legs. So when I stand up, the banjo stays in the same spot. So my arm, my posture doesn't have to change whether I'm sitting or standing. So I can stand up or I can sit down and my arms are still in the same place. And so that's how I adjust that. Uh, you know, as a guy, I sit with my legs spread out and it's really handy. Uh, if were I to cross my legs, can I cross my legs? Yes, I can. Then I would I would probably adjust my strap a little differently. I would adjust my straps a little differently, but so I would be balancing part of the weight on on my legs, part of it on my shoulder. But yeah, that's uh <laughs> Oh, Mark, you're funny. Uh Mark Mark says Here, I'll just put that on the screen, Mark. Yeah. interesting thing sometimes we mistake joint range of motion for amount of tissue so if you just have your arm up um you know sometimes tissue does get in the way but it gets easier and if you really can't you know you can use your strap come upside down oh like an inversion table yeah um, I had a roommate. Well, he wasn't a roommate. When I was in the dorm, uh, the one of the guys across the hall from me had had one of those in his room. I, I swore he, he was a vampire, but he he because I I'd go over to see him and he'd be hanging upside down, you know. So. I mean, I don't know that I have a one like. I think people really enjoy the sensation of it, right? Like that traction. Right. Pressure, but I think there's other ways of dealing with pressure that don't require a machine. Um, why some people take the strap on the right shoulder? Oh, oh well, that, there, there's a good. That's a good one. And uh, if you find pictures of me from the late '80s, early '90s, I've got my strap over here. I wore it over here forever. I wore it over here because Earl Scruggs wore it over here. And here, let me show. Well, this strap is really too long for that now, but let me show you what happens. So I wore it over here. Here, we're going to move again. Things are going to get weird. Here we go. Boom. So I, I wore it on that shoulder. Now, notice notice my right shoulder, what it's doing. I mean, I could, it, I, I hunch it up. And if you, if you look up uh, any, so like, if you'll find Kenny Ingram, who still wears his strap on the shoulder, you'll see his shoulder up. J.D. Crow does it. Uh, we did this because Earl Scruggs did it. Earl decided, and the reason Earl did it is he wore a hat. 
And so he put a hat on and when he wanted to get the guitar, he could just set his banjo down, get a guitar. He didn't have to. And he wore the strap on the right shoulder. He didn't have to take his strap off. So it makes it, it kind of made sense in a way. But somewhere around 1992, 93, I decided, man, I've got to get that off that other shoulder. And so I moved it to my right shoulder. You're back, but we can't hear you. So the story he was telling me while he's getting his sound back is that it was just a real functional reason to have it on his right shoulder so he didn't have to get the strap over his hat. Um, but Jim doesn't wear a hat, <laughs> so he's putting it on his left shoulder these days. Is it uncomfortable? To wear it on the right shoulder? I would think so, especially if you're shrugging to hold on to it. Um, but are you asking if it's uncomfortable to, for which shoulder? I'm not sure. Um, but Jim will be back. <laughs> and hopefully that answers your question. You've had some really good ones, Severin. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to, are you back? I'm back. Back. <laughs> uh, I wasn't yeah. sure asking if it's more, if it's uncomfortable on the right or the left, but. Um, uh, for me, it's more comfortable on, on the left shoulder than on the right. Uh, but, you know, I wore it on the right shoulder for, for a really long time, probably Let's see, I wore it on that shoulder from 1977 to about 92 or 93. And uh, it, it was just, I mean, it, it's just how it's just how I did it. And, but I tell you, it's, it's definitely more comfortable on my left shoulder now. So let's see, other comments. Let me catch up here. Uh, Bascom. Uh, just just a, a general banjo question as opposed to, uh he's asking about a forward roll somebody who has a uh, play it uh you know to add emphasis and some life to what you're doing it's just, just going to take time and just trust in yourself to be able to add the emphasis where you want it so yeah i can play and that that's kind of dull but you can emphasize certain notes. And, and you can put stop. I mean, there, there's a variety of things that you can do. Uh, Did I go away? You're back. back. Uh, DR Dalton, when, when you put your banjo in your lap, it tends to slide. Is there a way to fix that? Strap. If you don't have a strap, when I, when I have no strap, my banjo wants to do that. I can't hear you anymore. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll leave and come back. Are you back, Lisa? Back. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Rod, that's correct. Uh, yeah, but DR, when, when you're sitting in a chair, definitely wear your strap. Another thing on your straps, this strap, it's slick on the inside and out. I mean, so it's slick. So. It will slide a little bit, but this banjo is heavy enough that, I mean, it, it's really not a huge problem. But if you can get, if you get a strap, and, and you'll look at a, you'll look at a leather strap, and you'll say, 
man, that's a nice looking leather strap. And then you'll look at the inside and it'd be all rough. And you think, well, why didn't they finish that out? Well, I tell you, it's not finished out on purpose. And that way, when you're wearing it, it doesn't slip. It, it sticks to your clothes. And so that's, that's pretty important. So, yeah. So be sure if you get a leather strap to make sure it's got the, a rougher, it has the outside of the cow on, on your shoulder. So there's your piece of leather information, the outside of the cow and then the inside of the cow. The inside is slick and shiny. The outside is rough. So, so the, the, the outside of the cow goes next to your skin. Uh, and yeah, the art might just need to be tighter. Adjust it, adjust it so you have some tension on it. Uh, let's see. Let's do a couple more. We've been here an hour 15, so uh, don't want to wear folks out. Well, we're, we're really glad y'all, we're, we're, we're really glad y'all came. Uh, a few questions. Yeah. Let's see here. Y'all be sure to visit Lisa's Instagram and she's got a Venmo and a PayPal. So y'all, that's been scrolling across. Y'all feel free. Uh, Y'all have been generous in the past, so. Uh, I've been. Uh, yeah, the Instagram feed, uh, especially in December, there's going to be a lot of movement tips that you can do from home. Um, but keep the questions coming. Uh, Jim and I have through April, so we've got two more Wednesdays coming up. Yeah. Throw up your questions for that or let us know in advance and I'll try to have a better answer. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all keep in mind we we we've got two more of these get moving with Lisa and Jim here. So uh, if you've got questions or anything, gosh, we we'd sure like to we'd sure like to help you. And uh, I've got a couple of other live streams coming up. Uh, not tomorrow. Uh, well, yeah, I've got a live stream coming up tomorrow evening. It's a ukulele play along, but you can bring your banjo and play along. And then I've got, I've been talking to a friend of mine about doing a uh, sort of a banjo interview. So it's a, it's a guy, I, boy, it's a picker that I really admire and I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I mean, he, he's, he, he, his right now, his CD is the only CD I have in my car. So, oh. so, uh, and Rod, we, we can't play together over the internet. There's too much lag. Uh, by the time Lisa says it and and then it gets to me, there's there's a couple seconds between us. So I, I wish we could. I wish we could. Maybe you can um, play us a tune on the way. Yeah, we could do that. I can play something. Uh, Taz, I, can you make a Washburn 11 sound like a menstrual fretless? Probably not. Uh, I mean, to... So those those old fretless minstrel style banjos, they're uh, boy, that's a different animal. I've got one over yonder. Uh, maybe I'll drag it out for the next stream. It, it's definitely different. Let's see, what could I pick for y'all? Uh, <laughs> what, what what was that, Lisa? Somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> Somewhere over the rainbow, huh? Can I do that? I don't know really a banjo Four. <laughs> I like it. 
All right. For that. Let's see. Jim, do I ever get to the West Coast? Uh, boy, I'm hoping so soon. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Let me scroll back up. San Diego, probably not. Be San Francisco area. Be North Bay if I get out there. My son is in Fairfield. And uh, if everything goes according to plan, I should have a grandson as of Friday, this coming Friday. So uh, we'll, we'll see. So that's the plan as it stands. Uh, I'll probably be out in North Bay area probably for a week or two sometime, maybe in July. I don't know. It just all depends on uh, how this whole COVID thing goes. Uh, I mean, we'll see. It's just like it's going to be hard to keep me away from my grandkid, though. I can tell you that. <laughs> Da, da, da. All right. Oh, Lisa and Jim, what a flight. Uh, I don't think Lisa's seen any of the flight ukuleles unless she's been surfing around on her own without, without my guidance. But uh, uh, flight makes some interesting stuff. Uh, some, some, some of their instruments are pretty cool. And, and they've got a... Uh, They've got a little composite model that I looked at at the NAMM show that I thought was really pretty darn cool. Mike has them at the Uke Republic. He's got he's got uh, those flight uh, flight uh, branded ukuleles. But he knows where Uke Republic is. Yeah, here unsolicited unsolicited advertisement. Uke Republic is in Austell, Georgia, so you can go to ukerepublic.com if you need a banjo or a, if you need a ukulele. <laughs> Definitely check out Mike and Donna there at uh, Uke Republic. They're still down there and they're still working. Uh -huh. Can I play poor Ellen Smith? Uh, poor Ellen Smith. Uh, let's see. How she was found. Da, 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 cold on the ground. Smith, poor girl, they found her dead. <laughs> it's not a bluegrass song till somebody dies. <laughs> All right, y'all. Uh, let's see. Oh, is it okay to make your banjo have a whammy effect when you push and pull? Yeah, you know I do that. So, uh, so uh, like in Ruben. <laughs> So I'll play through a break of Reuben and then the ending. And yeah, you, you can do these. Uh, you can do these where you bend the instrument. And, and I actually bend the neck here. Hold on. Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Let's see which way. That way. So you can actually, I, I hit the note and I push down on the head and then I push the neck forward. So you get this, so I can, I can, I can move it almost a half step. So yeah. So yeah, I do that. That's pretty All cool. All right, folks. 
Well, thanks y'all for watching. Uh, thanks for coming. We're going to do this again. We'll be back here. Same time, same bat time, same bat channel. I don't know if we should talk about bats right now. I think. <laughs> Upside down on that inversion. Uh, but, hey leader. Thanks for coming, man. Uh, thank thanks. Thank all y'all for coming. I, I tell you, it's, uh, it's a treat to see this treat to see everybody here. And, uh, Oh, Severin, you're you're doing great, man. I, I tell you, I, I watch your videos, and I show I show them to a lot of folks. I say, hey, check out Severin. You're, you're doing great. So, appreciate y'all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. We'll see y'all soon. Bye, y'all. And.